Good morning, class. How are y'all? How'd the homework go? We were working on area homework last time. Do y'all have any questions? No? Okay, great. Um, uh, can you go ahead and start? I'm going to go ahead and start talking, but can y'all start sending your uh, test corrections from the last one up? Just pass it forward and then all the way to this side. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about volume, but first I'm going to go over dimensions which we've been working with dimensions, but this is a different kind of dimension. This is the kind where you get really excited because you go to the movies and you put on those weird blue and red glasses and all of a sudden all the stuff is flying at you. You know the 3D movies? That's what we're talking about today. So, first there is the zero dimension. That is just a point. So we worked with that the other day when we were graphing things, you know, graphing points. So it would be like, you know, x, or parentheses, x, comma, y, parentheses. And then after that, we have the first dimension. The first dimension is just lines. And so we worked with those recently, um, just earlier this week or last week, whenever we were working on measurements. So, you know, get your rule out, measure the lines and everything. And then we worked on perimeter, and that kind of segues, it's kind of toggles between first and second dimension. So second dimension is flat shapes. So today I'm going to use um, a square or quadrilateral for our examples. And so this is in the 2D, but quadru or, um, perimeter uses our knowledge of the first dimension with our lines to solve for perimeter. So we just measured these all the way around and add it up to get the perimeter. And then, especially with, um, <coughs> excuse me, with the second dimension, we're talking about area. And that's what we did the other day. So, Nicholas, do you remember the equation for area? Good, 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 good. Okay, so I'll write it over here. So area equals length times height. So our length was right here and our height was right here. So today we are finding out how many blocks of area go into one 3D object. 3D is when it's coming at you. This is most of the things in our life like that and so we have a bunch of these like sheets of area going back as many times as we have W. So that means our volume equation is V for volume equals we still have our area so L times H and now it's times W as well for our width. So um, let's do an example real quick. So say I make I make the length 3, the height 2, and the width 5. That means that whenever I do my equation, it would be V equals length, so 3, times height, which is 2, and then times 5, which is our width. So, Jacob, do you know what that would equal? Do you know what 3 times 2 times 5 is? Yeah, very good. It is 30. Now, then we need to talk about our units. So let's do this in terms of meters. <clears throat> so this is a meter because this is just a length. And then who remembers our area? Well, um, if, it, if we're working with meters, what's our area unit? Jasmine? Yeah, meter squared. So this, this part is in meters and then today we're going to be working with meters cubed and so if you look it actually lines up with the dimensions because when we're in the third dimension the exponent is three when we're in the second dimension the exponent is two when we're in the first dimension with this line there's an understood one at the top of this m so that with the meters so uh let's see I have a tissue box, so I'm going to hand it to you, Haley, 
and I want you to take it and measure how long we'll do the length first and then you'll hand it over to Ryan and you'll go down the line and tell me what they are so we can do an example of that let me erase this so we can write a new one. Oops. So, what is the length? Eight. Okay. And then hand it off to Ryan. What's the height? Two. And, oh, it's not a two. And then hand it off to Rick. What's the width? Three. Perfect. All right. So, Tyler, what is our volume? Yes, eight times two times three. Wyatt, do you know how much that equals? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, 48. What unit? Meters cubed. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of segue into asking y'all, what is a real world example of volume? Why do we need this? What do you think, Demetrius? Yeah, that's a really good example, especially with Christmas coming up. Um, with how big a box is, what can we fit in it? And so that way we can figure out, okay, how wide what we put in, how tall, you know, we can kind of work with that to figure out, you know, so we're not wasting boxes and time and everything. So, um, another example, which we're going to be playing with today is to find out, like, for instance, if you have a pool, how much water you can fit in. So, I have this container and Rachel, how much water is this? How do I find the volume? What's the equation? I like your guess because it's what we've been working for, but this volume times length times height times width, that's only for quadrilateral 3D objects. So we need a different equation. Andrew, what equation do we use? You don't know? What about Olivia, what equation do we use? You don't know either? Okay, well, you know what? That's unfortunate because I don't either because this is weird shaped. So we're gonna need a different way of solving this. So, I have a rectangular prism. Do we know how to find the volume of this? Yeah, that's what we were just learning. So, that means if I take this and hopefully don't pour it everywhere and just into the container. Oh, look how good I'm doing. Now it's in a different container. What do y'all think? Nod your head if you think, nod or shake your head if you think that the amount of water has changed, that the volume of water has changed. All right, we're at about 50-50. The volume is actually the same, and this is why. Okay, so because of COVID, we don't have people to come up and represent it, so it's all gonna be me. Okay, so you and you and you come up. All right, so stand here, and class, you're gonna copy all this, so go ahead and stand up. Think about how much volume you have. All right, and then everyone sit down. Did the volume of you change? Did the amount of you change? No. All right, now, next child, I want you to lift up your hands and go on your tippy toes. So now you're a lot thinner. Did the amount of you change? Okay, and then what about him? He's gonna stand all crazy and I want you to match his stance. Did the amount of you change? No, which is why we can pour it into something way easier to find the volume of, and then we still know it's still the same amount of water, it just looks different, and now we can find the volume of it. So this is what we're gonna be doing in your activity today. We're gonna have, I'm gonna have, um, I basically just did the reverse of what you're gonna do. You're gonna have these rectangular containers with some water in them, and you're gonna do a few steps with this. So bring your notebook with you because the first thing we're gonna do is you need to measure the height of the water in here. And then I want you, remember how we did units last week? I'm gonna keep bringing it up. I want you to guess how many, how much, like how much water there is. So 
and you know you can use in cups, pints, quarts, whatever you want. Elephants, I don't recommend that one, but you know, do what you want. So guess how much is in here? And then what was the next step? Oh, take a sharpie, not a sharpie, don't use a sharpie. I misspoke. Use an expo and draw a line where you think that it might come up to whenever you pour it all in. And you can put your little initials on there. And then carefully, you'll have crawfish trays. At least if you're gonna spill, keep it in the crawfish tray. You're gonna dump all the water back in there and see if you can figure out, um, and then brag to your uh, group members about who got the closest. And then, you know, it's going to be roughly the same amount as before, but, you know, not really because I'm really bad at pouring. But we're going to pretend like it's going to be exactly the same. Yeah. Okay, so I undershot it, which is embarrassing because I knew how much, I knew about how much it was prior to this. And I'm really, I personally am really bad at seeing, okay, if there's this much in here, how much is going to go in there? My family is very aware because I can't, I go through like three containers trying to store leftovers because I keep guessing wrong. Okay, and then I shouldn't have put this down here. After you pour it and brag to your friends, your, you know, group mates and everything, you are going to flip over the container and on the bottom, you can compare your guess to the amount that I wrote. However, it might not be in the most convenient amount um, unit. It's going to be written in quarter cups. So that's going to be part of your homework. The first part of your homework is I want you to take, write down the amount of quarter cups that's on there, and I want you to convert it to regular cups, to pints, to quarts, and to gallons. And then after that, you I want you to take your rollers and measure, we already got the height that the liquid came up to, so now I want you to measure uh, the length and the width. And so for homework for tomorrow, you're going to all calculate the, um, you're going to calculate the volume of your group's liquid that ended up in here, but started off in here so it's easier to measure. And then since it's a weekday, that's all we'll do. On the weekend, we're going to do some word problems with volume and all that, but for today, We'll just do that for homework. You are gonna get into groups based on alphabetical, oh wait, no, pick your own groups. Be in groups of four, and um, yeah, y'all have fun. Don't run, I know y'all are so excited for this. And let's see, we talked about homework. Um, yeah, so if anyone needs some extra help, you can come back and talk with me while everyone else starts on the activity. And then before you, before you leave, put your homework from last night on your desk so I can check and make sure everyone did it. All right, y'all. Y'all good to start? All right. I put some, some cues on the board if you need to look back at it. So, and if those don't make sense, you can come back and ask me. All right, y'all. Okay. Good to go.